Stitch type is one of those things in embroidery that can really affect the look of your finished design. It can affect how light plays across the same color of thread, and it can give your designs a lot of dimension. You've got a lot of options to choose from. To access your stitch type, you can do it from the property bar. So as soon as I select something, I've got stitch type right up here. Or if I right click and go to properties, I can go to top stitching and access it here. And to start, I've got a couple of pieces of lettering here. And it's the same lettering as Melco. You've got different types of typefaces. So here we've got a lovely slab serif, Cecil Block. And then below that, we've got Melody. And it's this flowing, thick, thin script. It's got a lot of play. But you can see I, I chose a light green here so you can better see how those stitches can kind of play with that light. So these are in satin stitches right now. And satin stitches tend to be very rounded, very sculptural, and they can save on stitch count because we're not sinking stitches inside of the form. Satin stitches can have a little bit of a limited range. They can't go smaller than the needle that you're sewing with. And if you go too long with them, they can snag and pull out. So I typically like to keep my satin stitches between about 10 points or one millimeter and 70-ish, maybe 80 points or seven to eight millimeters wide. Now, if it's going on something that's not going to get a lot of use, if it's going in a formal room and it's going to just sit there, you can get away with a lot longer satin stitches. But if it's going on the back of a work jacket, then you may need to think about having a different stitch type or keeping your satin stitches a little bit shorter so that they can't snag and pull out. With those limitations in mind, if you have a satin stitch that exceeds this specified amount, and right now it's set to 80, if it exceeds that amount, it will go to a random patternless fill. And that patternless random fill is actually, it's sinking stitches inside the form, but it's actually a little bit harder to see than your standard patterned fill or your standard step fill. So if I take this up to, let's say something like two and a half inches, let me move this down so we can see it a little bit more. You can start to see where it gets really wide. It's starting to sink stitches inside the form to keep them in the garment and from snagging and pulling out. And this will show up more on screen than it will in the final sew out. The next stitch type I want to look at is a fill. And the fill stitches, they sink stitches inside the form. So they, instead of going from one side to the other the way that a satin stitch would, they'll sink stitches inside the form. They're a little more stable that way as far as if it's on a work jacket or something like that, they're not going to snag and pull out nearly as easily. Um, but because they sink those stitches inside the form, they are a little bit flatter. They, they don't have quite the dimension that a satin stitch will have. And um, because you're sinking stitches inside the form, you've got more stitches in your design. It can raise your stitch count. So satin stitch can save you some stitches. Fill stitches, while being able to stay in the garment at wider areas, it can raise your stitch count a bit. Typically, fill stitches are for larger areas, but let's look at it on lettering. So I'm going to change this to a fill. I'm changing it up here just so we have a little bit more room. Let me close this out so we can zoom in. There we go. Excellent. So now you can see I am sinking stitches inside the form. It does have a bit of a pattern to it because it is not random and patternless. It has a step pattern. You can almost think of it like, honestly, like laying bricks, except each brick is a little stitch. Now, just like when satin stitches go too large, they become a random patternless fill. If I look at the top stitching, so because we're dealing with lettering, we have to go down to top stitching to see the stitch type and see the properties associated with it. But because I'm dealing with fill stitches, anytime I'm dealing with smaller areas, it will become a satin stitch. And what that does is it prevents extra small stitches from becoming a bit of a problem. Let me change this to fill so we can see it on that thick thin. So now we've got fill stitches in here. And then when it becomes thin, it becomes satin. And that does a few things that saves you on stitches, but it also saves you from tiny stitches that may cause you a thread break. So satin stitches are for smaller 
elements and fill stitches are for larger elements and if you don't really know what's going to be appropriate or if you are designing something that is going to be scaled quite a bit back and forth you can choose to have it use auto stitch type auto stitch type kind of alters between the two satin or fill based on the overall size of the design element so here we have a design element that has small areas large areas and then little bitty elements and right now it's kind of mixed what the stitch types are so for here we have a fill for here we have a satin but as you see it gets large and then becomes that random patternless fill if i'm going to be scaling this or if i'm just not sure what the appropriate stitch type would be i can right click go to properties now right now it's blank because i have multiple stitch types selected some with short stitches on some with auto density on some with them off so it's kind of that in between if i turn on auto and hit apply it will automatically change the smaller areas to satin and the larger one to a fill now if i were to zoom out and scale this up so this is going to be on something bigger then these just became fill while these are still small enough to be satin and even though you are still dealing with the stitch types as they are the if i get smaller than a certain point and i'm going to start possibly giving you thread breaks from tiny tiny stitches it will turn into satin stitches then same thing if you have a satin stitch that occasionally gets too big to that it may snag and pull out it will become a random patternless fill if you want to see those ranges or modify those ranges you can click on this icon anytime you see this ellipsis beside a property it's just how to access the settings for the property itself let's get this out a little bit more so you have a little bit more room and visibility so here you have your small object range and it's looking like it is 0 to 60 points and it is a satin stitch with auto density and short stitches on and all of that looks great and uh, used fill for stitch lines greater than now here you have your large object and that's going to be anything that averages so overall what's the majority being and it is stitch lines greater than 60 points and you can see the stitch pattern that it creates so auto stitch type is handy for if you don't know what to do or if you know that you're going to be doing something that's going to get scaled to a bunch of different sizes it will automatically change those settings for you so we've got satins we've got fills now let's get into some of the stitch types that are a little less likely to be used for lettering and that would start with something like a zigzag let me hit apply and okay and yeah that's probably not going to be used for lettering much zigzag stitches and their cousin tackle stitches they're not really meant to be lettering they are typically either used as an underlay or if they really are top stitching typically they are tack down stitches for applique so i have a piece of fabric down and i want to attach that fabric as quickly as possible without shifting it without moving it so you have very spaced out stitches that walk every time to tack that material down so zigzag and tackle very similar stitches really not meant for lettering um, they are more tack down stitches for applique so here is my zigzag if i change this to tackle i'm going to skip a couple to get there you can see it's same thing it's just a little denser now we've got tackle we've got zigzag let's go back to that zigzag and i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to make this a satin stitch and i'm going to go into properties I'm going to turn off auto density and I'm going to make this the same density as that zigzag. I'm going to turn off underlay so that we can actually see what's going on. None. Thank you. Okay. So what, what are the differences here? So let's make 
the satin stitch so first so we can zoom in and see the difference between a zigzag and a satin stitch or a tackle and a stat satin stitch. So when I was talking about zigzags and tackles, I said they pretty much stepped every time and they do. Every stitch moves forward through the design, whereas a satin stitch, so this blue is the satin stitch, it goes across the form and then steps across the form and then steps. So that's the big difference between a zigzag and a satin stitch is that a satin goes across the form and steps on the next stitch, whereas a zigzag and a tackle, they're going to step every time. So if you're looking for a squared off end, you're not going to find it with a zigzag or a tackle where you will find it with a satin stitch. The next stitch type I want to look at is an E stitch. And those sewers among you may know this as a blanket stitch and typically it would go around the outside edge of a blanket to kind of finish that edge a little bit and it's done by hand and it goes around the outside and jumps in. Same type of thing. Uh, the E stitch is just again meant as a tech down for an applique and it moves around the outside edge and then jumps in to tack it down. So if I change this to an E stitch, it's going to look really funny here really not meant for lettering but if you look at the o you can kind of get the idea of what it's trying to do for an applique so it moves around the outside edge and then jumps in to tack it down and then moves and then jumps in to tack it down and you can ignore this this is just a travel stitch um, typically when i use an e stitch i'm not going to have that again not really meant for lettering it can be used as a decorative type of stitch i've seen this done over a satin stitch to give it a certain look but most often it's going to be used as a tack down for applique. Now we're getting into stitch types that make even less sense to have lettering as the example. We're looking at decorative stitches and sequin and then stipple, which is new for this version of Design Shop. So here I just have a walk and a complex fill and I'm going to change that stitch type to a decorative so you can see the difference. And the walk decorative just basically creates a decorative element that is repeated either along the shape or throughout the form, depending on if you're dealing with a linear element like a walk stitch or something that has a little more area to it, like a complex fill. That decorative element or motif can be changed from the pattern dropdown. Sequin basically does the same thing, but if you have a sequin attachment, you can put sequins throughout the form. And then lastly, we have stipple, and you'll notice it's not available for a walk. So I'm just going to delete that. Now I'm going to change this to a stipple. And that's kind of a meandering pattern that fills the area. Stipple is an effect that you'll often see in quilting, but it can be used to great effect in embroidery if you use it in a more decorative trapunto kind of way. For example, here I have a nearly five and a half inch monogram that we are using that stipple in the fill in the background, and it meanders through and it would tack down the nap on a towel, allowing the M to kind of puff out and through. Got a very large monogram, and yet only 12,000 stitches. With all the stitch types you have available in Design Shop, you can add a lot of dimension and creativity to your embroidery designs.